Welcome to the Idaho Fishing Report. Whether you are planning just a couple of hours or a full weekend of fishing, this is your one-stop place for all the information you need to plan your trip. It's all right here from weather forecasts and reservoir levels to the latest stocking reports and expert advice. And now the host of Idaho Fishing Report, Jeff Colors. Well, welcome. This is the Idaho Fishing Report for the Panhandle Edition. That's right. This is the first show that we cover Northern Idaho. So happy to have you along. I'm Jeff Colors. Uh, we got Jordan Rodriguez going to be joining us uh, talking about uh, lines. I know, tight lines 208. We're talking about lines. I like it. Uh, I've got your weather information, reservoir level, boat ramp information, uh, stocking, tournaments, uh, everything you need, including your moon phase report and that grade for the weekend. So welcome to the Idaho Fishing Report for the Panhandle, March 17th, 2023. All right, let's jump right into it here. Uh, starting up in Coeur d'Alene, sunset's going to be around 6.55 p.m. local time. All right, uh, the weekend looks really pretty nice up there. Highs in the low to mid-50s, partly cloudy to mostly cloudy all weekend. Very low rain, very low chance of uh, any rain. Now, Monday, it, it's going to get a little worse. You're going to get some afternoon showers, uh, and that's going to be turned to snow Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, and all the way through Thursday, highs there are going to be in the mid to upper 40s. Bonner's Ferry, uh, a little bit colder up that way. Still only going to be partly to mostly cloudy all weekend. Highs in the mid 40s to low 50s. And then that drops back down into the mid 40s. Again, with that snow rain mixed uh, the rest of that week. So uh, just uh, not really great up there once you get into the second part of uh, after the weekend. Now, Let's talk about where it's great. This is my prime spot to go fishing this weekend. Uh, this is where you want to be. Lewiston, sunset around 6.56 p.m. Over the weekend, highs in the upper 50s, lower 60s. I know I'm getting excited about lower 60s, but still, hey, to see a six and a zero on that page is just fantastic. So definitely something that we want to see as, as it's nice. Sunny on Friday, partly to mostly cloudy the rest of the weekend. Uh, Single-digit uh, chance of rain, single-digit winds, so great weekend to get out. And then the rest of the week really doesn't look that bad either. Highs in the mid to lower 50s, uh, cloudy except for Wednesday. You're going to get some morning showers, 36% chance there. But, uh, man, that seems to be the place to go. Lewiston is, uh, is, looks like a really hot spot to get to this weekend. Um, Door Shack, all of those places up there around Orofino. All right, it is time for our hot tip of the week, presented by Tightlines208.com. Joining us as he does each and every week, owner and creator of Tightlines208, Jordan Rodriguez. Jordan, how are you? I'm doing great, Jeff. What about you? I'm doing well. Uh, as you know, I, I'm very much affected by the weather, and it, it's, it's getting better. I know it was cold the last couple of days, but it looks like it's getting better, that forecast. Those numbers keep going up. The, the days get a little longer. So the, as we get closer and closer, I'm getting better and better. I got to say, I think we've talked about it before. March, on average, might be just about the toughest fishing month that we have. Um, you know, it's just kind of a transition between winter and spring. And uh, there's a lot of, lot of difficulties, a lot of headwinds. There, so There is. But here's what's weird. Uh, I was talking to uh, one of my coworkers this week, and they talk about how they killed it at CJ Strike for crappie last weekend. So go figure. Wow. Go figure. Go right? figure. <laughs> hey, what is that Tight Lines 208 hot tip of the week, my friend? Yeah, so as I often do, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about something that I have in one of my upcoming articles. Uh, this will be released in the uh, Magic Valley Times News on March 16th. Uh, and in the Statesman at some point in the near future as well. And uh, I'm going to be talking about fishing line. Okay. And I know we've talked about it on the show before. Uh, I think it's really important. I think it's often overlooked, right, is we just kind of throw whatever on there yeah. or even yep. use what comes on the reel. Um, so 
there's a lot in the article. I won't go into all of it because it would, uh, you know, be quite a bit of, of content for this segment. But I'm just going to focus on two things that I think are huge. And I also see it a lot where uh, th- where this is a problem, right? Where somebody is unaware or, or in my opinion, would be not doing it right. Um, not on purpose, but just because they don't uh, know any better. So sure. the two things are to not overdo it with your line. And I mean by that two things. One is how heavy of line are we using? And two, how much of line are we using? Um, I'll start with that second one of how much. So on a spinning reel, I feel like probably the majority of folks are using spinning reels and that's where it's most important. But I also think this is true of all kinds of reels, regardless of, uh, you know, whether you're into spinning reels or spin casting or, uh, or bait casting style reels or even trolling reels is to not put too much line on there. Um, my general rule is about 75, maybe 80% full. Um, and the reason being is if you fill that thing all the way up to capacity, uh, which by the way, I've seen done many, many times, even by, you know, well, I have the guys at Cabela's do yeah, it for me. Right. Uh, and they, and it's, you know, full, like to a hundred percent or even, you know, even over a hundred percent full. Um, and just having too much line on there just leads to problems things like backlashes, things like the line, uh, what I call jumping the spool and getting in kind of behind the gears on a spinning reel, Um, you know, just wanting to to jump off and have too much line spilling out as you're making your casts. Um, All of those kind of tangle, annoying type problems, uh, I would say, you know, whatever percentage you want to put on it, a majority of those types of issues can be avoided or at least drastically reduced by just not going all the way full um, on that spool. So like I said, 75, maybe 80% max capacity on your, uh, when you're filling up your reels. The second part of that, and it kind of dovetails in, is how heavy of line are we using? Mm -hmm. And for me, uh, the, the answer to this is almost always going to be, what's the lightest I can get away with? Um, And that's what I want to be using lighter line for one, you'll be able to fit more per capita on the reel, right? If you're using eight pound as opposed to 15, because it's significantly thinner Um, and lighter line just performs better. You know, it's, it's nicer for casting. It's nicer for, you know, cutting and tying and retying and doing all your things. And then it has less visibility in the water uh, for the fish as well, which I think is a big deal, especially in certain scenarios like ice fishing, other types of vertical jigging, or really any kind of fishing where you're in super clear water and or on pressured fish, you know, fish that are seeing a lot of anglers and a lot of tackle in the water. So, you know, most of my setups as I kind of take inventory of all my different fishing gear uh, are going to have like six or eight pound. And in some cases on some of the ice fishing and like ultralight panfish stuff, four pound yep. even. Yep. Um, and you're really not going to see me use much heavier than 10 pound on really anything with the exceptions being if I'm on like a noted trophy hunt where it's like a tiger muskie or a Mackinac trout, you know, fish that we expect to be 10, 15 you know, maybe even 20 or more pounds, then obviously you don't want to be outgunned in that scenario. And also certain bass setups, like on flipping and pitching, you know, bait caster rods, you're going to be using heavier braided line and probably a short fluorocarbon leader um, that's maybe in like the 15 or even, you know, 20 pound class, just because those fishing applications you're intending to throw into some pretty heavy cover weeds trees all that type of stuff and so it's not really for the fish it's for battling the cover and also being able to pull those fish out very quickly so that they don't get hung up in the uh you know in the stuff so uh that's a quick overview lots more information in the article if you want to check that out but uh those are two things that i just see over and over and over again you know when i work with people in classes or lessons and they say hey check out my gear here and it's like well First thing I'm going to do is take off this 15 pound mono right, right, <laughs> on your uh, 
on your six foot, you know, medium kind of all species rig. And we're going to do something more like six or eight. And just making that one adjustment, I think just makes a world of difference for all kinds of things related to fishing performance, whether that's casting, whether that's having fewer issues with your line, uh, whether that's catching more fish, uh, kind of all of the above. So, yeah, I, 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 growing up in North Carolina, I had 10 pound and I had four pound and that was pretty much it. We had 10 pound for, uh, for bait casters and four pound for just about everything else for pan fishing. So, uh, but more bass fishing there here where you're dealing with more, more, you have more trout that you're also catching here that some of that mid range is, is definitely better. Um, but I think there's a misnomer, right? And, and, and I know we don't want to get too deep in it because this is what your classes are about, but you know, if you're catching a 10 pound fish, you don't necessarily need a 10 pound weight, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. 10 pound test. Yeah. So the test is what it's basically rated for like at maximum strain. So if you had, you know, 10 pounds of pressure on a 10 pound line, um, then you'd be, you know, potentially in trouble. However, as you're fighting a fish, first of all, people need to understand like a 10 pound, anything in Idaho waters is, you know, unless we're talking like sturgeon is pretty rare. Right. So it's not every day that you're going to be encountering these trophy class fish to begin with. More of it is going to be, you know, these one and two and three pound fish that you have no problem landing on six or eight pound line. The other thing is that uh, a very heavy fish can be landed on much, much, much lighter line than, you know, what it's quote unquote rated for. And that's what things like your fishing skill and your other equipment, like your rod and reel are made to do. So for example, you know, I've seen in extreme cases, ice fishing guys in the Midwest, they're like crappie fishing with two pound or four pound line and they hook into a muskie right? Now you got to get lucky because the teeth will just cut right through it. But if they somehow avoid the teeth and have that fish on, they're able to land like 20 pound fish on two pound line. And there's all kinds of stories out there and people say, "Wow, that's amazing that that happened. It is cool. And it is, it does show that the angler used some skill and knew what they were doing, but also like, that's what drag is for. That's what rod is for. Uh, that's what the angler is for to, you know, as you do this kind of tug of war, this push and pull with the fish by loosening that drag and allowing them to take line off the reel yep. and never letting it get to that full tension point. If that's the case, you should be able to land most fish. Now, obviously, there's all sorts of things. There's like jumps. There could be obstacles in the water, things that a swim fish swims under. Um, you know, all of those things are obstacles that we may have to navigate, but by and large, if you do it right, you should still be able to land many fish, probably not all, but many, maybe even most, depending on where you're fishing on lighter line than what the fish actually weighs on the rare occasion where you get one that's that big. And that is the art of fishing, isn't it? It is. And, you know, that's part of it makes it more fun, honestly, to catch fish on this lighter pound test yep. because you do have to kind of play it out and you can't just, you know, crank them in all the time. And uh, to me, that's more fun. You know, it's, it's a little more of a challenge. And I do think things like your bite ratios and things go up when you're using lighter line that's not as visible in the water and uh, is just, you know, more enjoyable to fish with. So think about that as you're getting your gear set up for the coming year, maybe size down a little bit, use a little lighter than what you've used in the past, maybe a little bit nervous at first, but I think you'll find as you use it, um, it's actually a, a better fishing experience and you can still land most, if not all of your uh, prize catches on that lighter line. Absolutely. All right. So listeners, uh, you've enjoyed this. Uh, great tips from Jordan here. Uh, you have a bunch of classes getting, you just like fishing, you're getting there to get geared up, right? We gave away a seat yep. at the Idaho Sportsman Show to Randy. Congratulations to him for winning that seat uh, through our Sportsman's Expo show. But you've got shows coming up, right? Or uh, Sorry, you got classes coming up. I do. I do. We're, we're going every month now. Uh, we have the trout class coming up at the end of this month. That's on March 30th, Trout of This World. Uh, it's filling up fast. We've got Randy in there and a bunch of other folks 
and uh, we still do have a few seats left. So if you want to check that out, we're going to be talking all things trout fishing. It's a great time to be doing that. You know, March, April, as we go into the spring here is uh, one of the prime windows for trout fishing uh, for the entire year. And of course, you know, depending on where you go and, uh, you know, alpine lakes in the summertime and rivers in the fall and ice stuff in the wintertime, uh, trout is really a year round deal here in Idaho waters. So uh, check us out on March 30th for Trout of This World. And then we're just going to keep it rolling, man. We got, uh, we'll have fast class coming up in April. I don't have a date set for that yet, but we will be holding that in April at Idaho Rod and Reel. And uh, in May, we're going to be doing some fly fishing with learning to fly. And we're just going to keep it rolling all summer, all fall. And uh, so give us a look up at tylines208.com. You can see our full offering of uh, what classes we have and, and when those might be coming up. And uh, join our mailing list. You can get first priority on all of those classes. And of course, listen to the show. We oftentimes have uh, additional goodies and discounts and opportunities to win a free seat. So uh, appreciate everyone who both listens and reads and or attends class. It's always good to uh, kind of meet people and, and see them in all those different settings. All right. He's Jordan Rodriguez, owner and creator of Tight Lines 208, and he presents this hot tip of the week each week on the Idaho Fishing Report. Jordan, we thank you and hope you have a great week. Yes, sir. Likewise, Jeff. All right. We will talk to you soon. Do you want to be part of the show? Email us with questions or your fishing report from your last trip. Email general questions to gemstatefishing208 at gmail.com. Fish pictures sent to myfish at gemstatefishing.com. And viewer questions to questions at gemstatefishing.com. All right, let's talk about reservoir level and boat ramp information. Uh, quarter lane is sitting at 2122. That is 13 feet from full. Uh, there's it, It's really kind of difficult to find any boat ramp information up there. But 13 feet from full, I don't think you're going to have a whole lot of problems getting into the main areas. Uh, as long as you step that way, again, um, not sure kind of what the, the ice looks like up there. But uh, just check it locally if you're headed up that way. Uh, uh, Pend Orle Lake elevation is sitting at 2050. That's 12 and a half feet from full. So a little bit higher than uh, Coeur d'Alene. Uh, there's again, no boat ramp information there. All right. Over in Lewiston, uh, door shack is sitting at 1520 at an elevation that is 80 feet from full, no boat ramp information. I would check with the state park up there, uh, because that's, they're going to, they control both of those ramps. Uh, or the main, sorry, the upper ramp, uh, the marina would have more information. Um, I know late March, door shack can be a little interesting, especially with ice and the temperature. But with highs in the 60s, I don't know. It, it might be uh, something to investigate. Give the Idaho State Park a call up there, and they can let you know. The ranger will let you know. Reservoir A over in Lewiston, 32% full. There is no boat ramp information. Soldier Meadow is sitting at 60% full. Again, no boat ramp information on that, and uh, that will help you get uh, ready for the weekend. Make sure you visit us at gymsafefishing.com for all the links to all the information we provide here. You can also contact us through the site. All right, uh, let's talk about uh, stocking and um, fishing tournaments. This is going to be a really short segment, folks. There's nothing happening up there. There's zero stocking happening up in the Panhandle region. Now, uh, the, again, these regions that I'm giving you now uh, are the fishing game region, stocking regions. So this is where fishing game manages. So the Panhandle region, uh, as defined by fishing game, there's no stocking to be reported there. And then also for Clearwater, there is nothing in the Clearwater area as well either. So none of that. And unfortunately, there are going to be uh, zero fishing tournaments happening up that way. Uh, but, you know, hang around. There's, uh, there's always more and um, uh, as, as we get along up in. Hey, you can find us on every social media platform from Facebook groups, Twitter, or Instagram. Our handle at Idaho underscore report. 
All right, let's talk about that moon phase now. Uh, and if you're new to the show, this is something that we do each and every week. Uh, I grew up, my grandfather believed in the moon phases. I'm a big believer in the moon phases. So uh, this is where uh, what I think is an important part of planning your fishing trip. Uh, we're currently in the last quarter, uh, which is, uh, which well, I'm sorry, the last quarter was March 14th. So we're coming out of that. The new moon is March 21st, and that's going to explain why the fishing is getting better. Last quarter is not a great quarter to go fishing. New moon, full moon, those are really good quarters um, to, to go fishing. Full moon, obviously, is the best. Perigee uh, is coming up March 19th, so that will be uh, on Sunday. Apogee is in the month, March 31st. Uh, just a quick reminder that the perigee is when the moon is closest to the earth, and apogee is when the moon is furthest away from the earth. <coughs> now, a lot of people, including myself, believe that when we're in perigee, the, the, the pull of the moon is stronger, and therefore you get better fishing um, on when, you, when we're in that phase. All right, so the weekend starts off soft. Like I said, we're coming out of that last quarter. Uh, just one good peak on Friday at noon, and uh, it gets better by Sunday. Uh, with good peaks at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Uh, and then you get that midday peak around 1 p.m. Sneaks in just at the excellent. Uh, now, the peaks keep getting better next week. Um, we'll see excellent peaks at 2 a.m. and 2 p.m. Uh, so keep an eye on those. And then 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. on Monday. As, and those kind of work their way uh, down uh, to to excellent peaks at 4 a.m. and 4 p.m. on Thursday. Now, the good peaks soften as the week goes along uh, and moves to 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. by Thursday. Uh, one thing that we're going to start doing this week, check out my social feeds, my stories, uh, as we're going to be doing daily feeds uh, on the peak times and where they are. So check those out this week. You can find us again at Idaho underscore report. All right. Oh, I love that riff. Uh, you should too, because it's mean it's time for the grade. And uh, of all three of our shows this weekend, this is the one. This is the grade that you want. This is a grade A weekend, maybe an A plus in the Lewiston area. In my opinion, this is it. This is the best area to fish in in Idaho this weekend. Highs in the 60s. You're going to see sun. Uh, it's going to be just you're gonna get times in the excellent peaks as we um, talked about in the moon phase report. So all of that will be there, so make sure you check that out. Now, keep an eye on the weather um, up north, though. My grade there goes down to a D on Monday. Uh, Lewiston is, is stays probably about a B um, because of the it does get a little cooler, but, man, as far as the up north, definitely a D as you get that snow that comes in. And uh, so just be careful with that through the weekend. All right, well, well, before we put a bow on this show, um, again, happy to be here in the Good Boy Studio and have this. We can present to you a video as well as audio recordings of all of our shows. And, uh, you know, we're going to get through this. We're going to get this better as we go along and uh, get this video part of it. But uh, I just want to remind you, if you want to go and help support, the best way you can help is go to our Good Boy Studio page as and, uh, but if you ever had an idea for a great podcast and you thought, man, I just don't know how to do it. I don't have the, the means or the knowledge. Uh, you just don't know how to get started. Well, starting your own podcast is as easy as contacting Good Boy Studios and letting us help you get your great idea out of your head and into listeners' ears. We can teach you how to write, edit, produce, and publish your own podcast, or we can handle all of those tasks and you just show up right here in our studio to record. Contact us today to learn more at goodboystudios.com. That's good, B-O-I, studios.com. Good Boy Studios can help launch your idea into a reality. All right, well, it's been a great show. Thanks for coming along. Thanks to Jordan for coming in and talking about different uh, weights of line, line to use. And uh, it's really great advice as we get in here. We're starting to get geared up. For this season, I don't know about you, but man, I am ready to get out. If Hopefully, you've had a chance to get out. I have not, but uh, I cannot wait to get out here, and uh, hopefully this weather's going to turn for us soon, and I can get out and find some time 
Uh, great show for you. And again, this is it, man. The Panhandle, the specifically Clearwater, looks to be the spot to go to this weekend. So hopefully you get a chance to get out and go. Thanks for listening. I appreciate you, listener. You make this possible. This is our third season, our first season covering the entire state. So very excited about that and uh, can't wait to have you along. We will be doing uh, daily stories on our social media feed. That's at Idaho underscore report. Uh, we'll be giving those, updating those peak times each and every day. So make sure you check that out. Uh, I'm Jeff Colors, and I'm happy to have you along. Thank you, viewer. We couldn't do this without you. And I'll see you on the water. We would like to thank you for listening to the Idaho Fishing Report. You can find us at gemstatefishing.com. Also, connect with us on Facebook. Instagram, and Twitter. You can also find us on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe and give us a like. Thanks to our sponsors, guests, and experts, but especially you, our listener, for making this show possible. This has been a Good Boy Studios production in association with OMS Multimedia, LLC. Join us next week for another episode of the Idaho Fishing Report. This show is the property of Old Man Studios, LLC. It may not be reproduced, rebroadcast, or retransmitted without the express written consent of Old Man Studios, LLC.